She strutted into my office wearing a dress that clung to her like saran wrapped to a sloppily butchered pork knuckle. <laughs> Bone and sinew jutting and lurking asymmetrically beneath its folds. The tightness exaggerating the granularity of the suet and causing what little palatable meat there was to sweat. Its transparency, the thief of imagination. That was the most repulsive thing I've ever read. Comparing the way a woman wears her dress to saran wrap covering a sloppily butchered pork knuckle <laughs> is upsetting to say the least but i guess it wouldn't be the men riding women subreddit if i wasn't disgusted Good morning everybody, I hope you're all doing amazing, thank you so much for being here. Today we're checking out some more men riding women, basically just guys that are living out their deepest darkest fantasies in their writing. We're probably going to see a lot of unsettling stuff today, but we'll have a good time. I hope you're all having a great day, thank you for being here. I'm doing bloody awesome, I feel good. I'm a little bit insane, I'm just about finishing a 48 hour fast and like I'm really hungry. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super focused, like my brain seems to be working better, I don't know, I I just like it. Let's do it. Let's have a laugh at some insane guys. Axinia? Listen with eyes contracted and suddenly she shamelessly swept up the edge of her skirt, enveloped pantaleman in the smell of women's clothes, and came breasting at him with writhing lips and bad teeth. Breasting is definitely a word and I think you can use it in that context. She breasted boobily towards me. I had to look this up and it's definitely a word, but it's one of those things that just shouldn't be. She's breasting towards me? <laughs> is she now? Later that night, Elaine and I talked some more while we lay in bed. Elaine often liked to stroke my... <laughs> when she was tense. <laughs> she said that feeling my heart on soothed her. When she was really upset, she liked to curl up with her head in my crutch and suck my... Oh, like a pacifier. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't need to read that today. Oh, well, I guess I kind of did. This is literally my job. How crazy is that? But imagine reading that story and then coming across that and just trying to keep reading like you would stop and be like um <laughs> what did i just read like anybody who reads it and they're like oh yeah cool you know who doesn't <laughs> that's insane batman had laid out what she had ordered try one of these chocolates while i wrestle with the core it's never easy getting out champagne corks we girls really need a man to help us with that sort of work don't we the ghastly prattle went on as she put a spectacular box of something 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 they're saying in the title how this woman just got finished torturing people, but now she needs help <laughs> to open a wine bottle. Oh no, where's my man to help me? This was so obviously written by a man because they would have been like, oh, it's so hot that she's torturing people. <laughs> like she's such a baddie. But also she needs to be dependent on men, of course, because otherwise I'd be useless trying to make himself feel like he's a big strong man, even though you just explained why that's not even necessary here. I want to meet some of these authors. The hunt is spread out, slithering across the sloping mountainside, each looking for a lie from which to take aim. Jay followed Lizzie. She wore a short riding jacket and a loose skirt with no hoop, and he grinned as he watched her pert bottom wriggling in front of him. Not many girls would crawl around like that in front of a man, but Lizzie was not like other girls. <laughs> Please don't try and be sexy and then say wriggled. Ugh, she's not a worm, bro. Jeez. Jesus, that's so gross. That puts such a weird image in your head. Oh yay, her pert bottom wriggled. Ugh. Take it away, Sideshow Bob. Alright, we have one that's a joke. I can't wait. How every author writes a guy kissing another guy for the first time. Bruce had kissed girls before, of course, but this was so different. Girls were all soft and curves and pliant, sighing beneath him. Pliant and submissive. But kissing David was nothing like that. His stubble burned Bruce's mouth. His kisses hard and aggressive and bruising. Every place that Bruce's hand searched for soft curves, they found hard planes and angles. So many angles. So incredible incredibly different from the soft, submissive girls Bruce was used to. Everywhere he touched was another angle. David was angles on top of angles wrapped in a dominant five o'clock shadow. Nothing like a supple, tender, mild girl. David was a dodecahedron with 12 faces and five angles on each. He had a total of 60 entire angles. Yeah, so uh, what's David again? <laughs> David's a real angular kind of guy. Just so hard and sharp and angular and <laughs> has a beard. 
<laughs> he's so manly. He feels like he's made of steel. The title says, Trying to write a satire on erotic novels by men. How did I do? Let's find out. Miss Larkin, peeking out from the adjacent scullery, shook her head in disapproval. According to the previous tenant, these stains have been there since the house was built in 1973. Ah, Miss Larkin, where do I begin with her? She was tall for a woman, or a man, or any gender in fact, standing at around six foot two. She had two eyes and the kind of lips that would make you say, yep, she uses them to talk. <laughs> her shoulders were the starting point of her arms and her waist <laughs> and her waist was in the correct position for a human being. She had a pair of legs that would go from her waist all the way to her toes. However, the thing about her was her breasts and ass. Men kept staring at them no matter what she did. That's because said men were perverts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yes! You killed that! That is so funny. She had a pair of legs that would go from her waist all the way to her toes. Oh baby, Miss Larkin. <laughs> That's actually incredible. Keep doing what you're doing. Another satire one. She smelled like hand sanitizer, pure and reminiscent of a hospital. Her lips were like marble, cold and smooth. Her eyes were like a stoplight. You wanted them to be green, but they were red and occasionally yellow. Okay? <laughs> this isn't about you, my Mind your business. It's actually impressive how spot on these are. It really makes you realize how dumb some of these authors sound. The stuff that they write is like straight up ridiculous. Like it just doesn't even make any sense, but they think it's okay. And they have people that read their books that think it's good. That's crazy. Okay, this P word thinks that the dangers of adventure are for him and not the 13 year old girl. It's an autobiography, not fiction. Paul Gorgian? Gorg I can't even pronounce that. Noah Noah, the Tahitian Journal. This child of about 13 years charmed me, made me timid, almost frightened me. But the mocking line about her otherwise pretty sensual and tender mouth warned me that the real dangers of the adventure would be for me and not for her. What? Yuck. Oh yeah, poor you, you could get in trouble. Like what? Oh, that's scary. That a guy saying something that gross, like about a 13 year old, bloody yuck, ill, and then to say that the danger is for him and not for her. Oh my God. We we read posts that are funny and then we read ones of people that have probably been in prison. An office chair review. The strongest rival to the Herman Miller Aeron. That's literally a chair I wanted to buy. Oh god, I'm scared. Chairs are like women. You may want a woman who you can marry and it's going to be the practical choice. And that's like this Staples hiking chair. You can sleep in this chair and it's going to be comfortable. But just for fun, just on the side, you want another chair that really inspires you. That invigorates you. Something you just keep on the side for a little bit of fun like the air on chair by Herman Miller <laughs> and yeah it's going to be expensive fun and it's not going to be very practical and you don't really want to sleep in it but maybe you could just have a little bit of fun riding it on the weekends or so the best chair for programmers <laughs> please tell me that they removed that review that is not good for business comparing chairs to cheating on your wife <laughs> yeah I'm having an affair with this Herman Miller chair oh <laughs> That rhymed. Yeah, these guys are really gross and uh, <laughs> there's not much more to say. At the touch of her lips, it grew long and swollen. I gasped as she squeezed and pulled expertly. Expertly. It was the best balloon giraffe I'd ever seen. Thank you so much. I am so happy that we have a joke after that last post because that was bloody terrifying. I love that this subreddit is full of funny ones as well because we definitely need it. Like, it's just way too much otherwise. I can't handle it. My entire life I'd been preparing for this day. Married to the devil's son and to be a baby making machine. Oh, like, you know, each to their own, I guess. <laughs> if you're happy being married to the devil's son and being a baby making machine, okay. Like some people really just like having kids. Maybe like this is one of those people, but probably not, especially if it's written by a guy. These guys just don't think very highly of women. It's like how incels think that women's only purpose is to make babies. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> icky, icky, gross, gross, yuck. The skin had kept a delicate shade of amber that in no way evoked the pale image of death. The vitality of the features was still intact. Sensual lips, rounded cheekbones, delicate earlobes, a mane of hair that had only barely faded to an ashen tone. Even her full breast, round belly, buttocks and thighs, although half submerged, looked as firm as those of a young woman in full bloom. Only her eyes, which he could glimpse through the half-open lids, had lost their original glow and were dimmed by a dull melancholy veil. You know, that's not too bad, but it still gives off some creepy vibes. And you guys 
know how I feel about creepy vibes. I'm not a fan. The description of men versus the description of women in the Brady Bunch theme song. It's the story of a man named Brady, name, who was busy being a single parent is tough with three boys of his own. They were four men, men, <laughs> living all together, yet they were all alone. Feelings versus the women of a lovely, pretty lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. Very pretty. All of them had hair of gold like their mother, the youngest one in curls. Literally just all about how they look and how pretty they are. Obviously not surprised though, because like how old's the Brady Bunch? People would have probably read that and thought nothing of it back then. It's just so weird. The guys, it's just like, here's his name and he has feelings. And then the girls, oh my god, she's so beautiful. Look at her pretty hair. She's so gorgeous. <laughs> okay. So much underlying pressure for women, you know. If you're a girl or a woman and you read that, you think that all that matters is how pretty you are. Like, that's so sad. Here we have some more Stephen King. Now Lucy stood in the driveway in a sleeveless blouse and her faded jeans. She looked slim and desirable, but her brow was furrowed, as if she'd had one of her pre-menstrual migraines coming on. Oh, Stephen King! Jesus! We've read a lot of him on this subreddit. And the thing is, a lot of his stuff is way worse than this. Futuristic soldier armor. Men, fully bulletproof for protection. Women, vital areas open to distract the enemy. Oh yeah, vital areas, your boobs and your stomach. Oh my god. Video games and like artwork is so bad. I might just have to check out the men drawing women subreddit. And you know what guys, I'm too scared to do any more. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you didn't get freaked out too much. If you had a good time today, make sure you smash like and make sure you subscribe if you're new. The channel is doing incredible. Thank you guys so much for the support. I'm seriously so grateful. I get to sit here and read out funny stuff and people enjoy watching it. That's amazing. Today's comment of the day goes to Arthur. It's odd how Vince's videos are always a bit uncomfortable to watch, but I always watch them anyway. Must be Vincey. <laughs> yes, I'm the uncomfortable part. Now listen, you can think whatever you want to, Arthur, but I don't think that's the case. We check out some pretty uncomfortable stuff. Either way, I don't mind. Thank you for watching my videos. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Hope you have a wonderful night. You know what I'm about to say. I'll see you tomorrow at the exact same time with two brand new fun videos. I'll see you guys then.